very soon. What is the name of it? Too many distractions. Too many distractions? You know, if you want to do with me, do with somebody else. Oh, not to talk about negative things. Remember one day I was walking to Gold's gym uh, and Mike's in the gutter laying there like a drunken guy. I'm like, oh my God, Mike. He didn't hear me. Like, then he walked in when we were training and warming up, taking his pictures off the walls. I, I said to my training partner, Tony, if I ever get like that, keep the pictures stay on the wall, okay? Don't let me do that. I was sort of making a joke, but I felt so sad from Mike. I was like... There was something going on in my subconscious. At that time, I did not understand the importance of philosophical consistency. Uh, there were a number of contradictions working in my soul when I didn't understand the nature of them. And the negative parts took hold. worried about him like wow Mike you know he, he was the guy that you know he intellectual the guy that was the scientist he had a great mind I'm like what a great bodybuilder that's the way we should be you know the epitome of what a bodybuilder is all about overall champion Mike Metzer from Washington DC at that point I was taking a lot of the and that on top of everything that happened that left me emotionally distraught did something to my mind that I'm fairly clear about today, although these things are very, very complex. The combination of being emotionally distraught, which can cause an individual to lose conceptual control, combined with amphetamine, did something to my emotional structure that led to my performing a number of irrational acts that got me institutionalized. On different occasions for up to three months, I was not being life confirming. At one point I had ceased to care. I was suicidal a couple of times. Because I had nothing that I valued strongly enough, there was no forward direction. It was literally a day-to-day -day existence. For a while, I would be, be, be pursuing something in my mind, and I was convinced it was real. I would get institutionalized for it, but I'd be released and think, well, I'm right, they're wrong, I'm going to continue doing it, even if it gets me in trouble. I was convinced I was right. One thing that does disappoint me is the fact that there were so few people seemingly made any spirit attempt to understand or extend any any support just spiritually. I heard from almost I heard from no one during that period. No one wrote me a letter, no one called, no one said, gee, I hope you're doing all right. But it's also true people have their own life dramas going on and everybody every day goes to things that are traumatic, stressful. And have to deal with what Mike Messer was going through, I understand, in several cases, just too much for them. It finally dawned on me that the phantasms I was pursuing were not real. Finally, the last institutionalization, I realized, hey, there's something wrong here. This is too much of this. I gave it a lot of thought and realized that all of that stuff contradicts everything else I had believed in for a long time, and that's what was right. Get back to what you knew before, Mike Minster. That emotional trauma you had with your father dying of the magazine and whatever else, along with the amphetamines, really did do something to your mind. It break all of that and go back to what you did know for sure. I did that and was, I was on to a almost immediate recovery.